Oh, this is, this is the intro, <laughs> fuck it. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of All Things Single Seater with myself and Jordan. We are here to discuss the Miami GP. And the reason we're laughing is because we've just recorded for like 20 minutes and I didn't have my mic plugged in. So we've got to do the whole thing again, so that's great. But yeah, how are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. Feeling like a bit of an idiot, but we move on. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Miami. Let's um, let's discuss what do we think about the weekend. So like, we won't do the teams yet. We'll wait until like after to do like driver and stuff. But like, the weekend as a whole, the how dramatized it was or wasn't. Give me your thoughts. Um, it was just absolutely chaos before there was even any racing, any media. Wednesday and Thursday was just chaotic i don't think anyone expected what happened obviously you had sky sports swimming in the fake marina uh lando and daniel walking around with crop tops um but on the plus side we had really good helmets which was nice to see it was a nice way to welcome miami to the calendar for the drivers um and obviously bottas just had to steal the show and do three helmets um across the days but was just a show it it felt like that for me it was all about the hype and then in reality it came to the racing and it was just like oh wonderful like it. yeah yeah i think it was a race of two halves but um in terms of like the weekend it annoyed me um i get annoyed easily anyway so probably no shock but like <laughs> the interviews the build up the it just didn't feel like F1, it felt like a party. And there were people there that didn't really know anything about F1 or didn't even want to. They are kind of there for the event, as it were, which is fair enough, that's fine. Like, you, you get it, it's at a new track. But like, yeah, I just thought it was all very put on. They they had, um obviously with the, the race, during the race they had, um instead of showing the drivers driving, which is what you're meant to do, they kept cutting to the fans, like, at parts during the race to show, like, the fan shots of people, like, screaming into the camera and stuff. And it's like, come on. Like, even on the, um even on, I think it was, like, two or three, or it might have been the formation lab, Crofty was like, and here we go round the section, and you can see everyone with their phones out. And my mate just looked at me and was like, why don't you just watch it? <laughs> instead of just getting your phone out. Oh, and recorded it like you're there, <laughs> you know. Watch it. It felt fake. Yeah, I think obviously they had a lot of celebs, and it, well, I say celebs. They had a lot of influencers there, um, as well as a lot of music artists. Um, but obviously, the influencers, all they want to do is video things, take pictures, be the this person on the. Uh, in, on Instagram, on anything, and say, oh, yeah, well, I was in the Mercedes gar garage, I was blah, 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 I went to the first ever Miami Grand Prix. And that's not what F1 is about. F1 is about the racing, it's about the fans, it's about watching the sport you love and it giving you that excitement. That, that's it, plain and simple. But for them to put on this big show... And invite all these celebs. I know the teams do invite a certain few across the weekend, but it seemed like there was a lot more than normal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the only team which didn't invite a celeb was Aston Martin. They actually invited a um, influencer from TikTok. Mm. Um, she's called F1 Tony on TikTok, and like the stuff she does is absolutely amazing. And she deserved to be invited. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that's the type of people I'd want to see there, if that m makes sense. Um, yeah. Cough us. Instead of it, yeah. Instead of it being just celebs constantly giving yeah. it, giving it a chance to the people who don't get that opportunity normally. Yeah, I just don't think people were there for the race. Um, like. Pharrell got interviewed on the grid and he was like who do you think is going to win and he normally he comes to some races so I thought okay cool and he was just like oh yeah Lewis because he's my brother and we were just there like cool 
that gives nothing to anyone because any F1 fan just knows that it's very unlikely that's going to happen. Like, I mean, yeah, it's just, oh, I don't know. The interviewers annoyed me. Calling Charles, um, Charles Chuck, that really pissed me off because it's like, get his name right. Like, the lead in the championship, get him right. <laughs> you know, the podium was a disaster. The police escort, what was that? Like, that was just outrageous. Um, like the podium, fair enough, you can kind of see it going out with the hats on. They did it in Russia, I think, before. Um, like putting the hats on, I, I get it, fine, whatever, over the top, but you'd expect it. And then the whatever the confetti white shit was at the end, like just coating the drivers in it, they couldn't spray the champagne at anyone because they were just co like covered. Um, yeah, I thought that part was all just embarrassing and cringy, but I don't know if I'm just being too harsh, but. It was an F1 to me. No, I, I agree. I think there's an element of like the celebration and so on, and there's a way to do things, but that wasn't the way. So yeah, that, that side of it was kind of, kind of let it down, I think. But the race. So the first part of the race, you know, I thought it was a bit boring, a, a little bit. Like the pass from Max on, on Charles, great, woo, like didn't fight back so it wasn't that exciting afterwards yeah um and then the safety car came out it went mental <laughs> really didn't it the closest stage well i say that none of us know okay none of us know because the cameraman decided to just shoot max verstappen and charles when nothing was happening we could have seen the mercedes drivers battling you know like the battle of the ages like old versus young we could have seen latifi magnuson and stroll and vettel we could have seen the schumacher vettel crash but no we saw nothing uh. <laughs> top work yes so it was exciting um, seeing the names go up and down constantly yelling at the TV for the cameraman to change. Yeah, but, but you want to see you want to see what's going on. <laughs> I was it was showing obviously Max and Charles and like one moment it was like um, Mick was in P nine I think Seb was in P ten yeah. and then they dropped down and then Daniel Ricciardo went up to in the top ten and then he dropped down and then it's just like. I, st going on? I still and... don't know how Magnussen retired. I haven't seen any on ball or a replay, but apparently he retired from the race. I don't know if he made it back to the pits. Yeah, but I don't know what happened to him. Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to think. I feel like Hass put something on there, or they might have just said he's retired, something like that. Okay. Uh... It sucked, didn't it? It, 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 it? it was such a chaotic, like five laps and then it just went back to like in normal apart from Seb and Mick yeah oh yeah Seb and Mick yeah. let's discuss <laughs> I I know who I think's more to blame but who do you think's more to blame I don't know I'm like 50-50 still there's a part of me what think was Mick pushing too hard? He's in the top 10. He knows this is his chance to score points. And it's like, should Seb just like... Let him through? I don't think yeah. so. Uh... <laughs> well, we saw it with like, almost every other driver. Charles let Max through, like, yeah. willy-nilly. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh yeah, you've got, you've got one pass. Don't <laughs> Yeah, we nearly missed that as well. We nearly missed the overtake for the lead as well, didn't we? No, um, I know. But, I don't know, I think Seb and Mick are very close, and I think they both know that they... I think Seb wasn't expecting it, and I think yep. Mick, Mick was expecting room. But I think Mick was a little bit too far back to go for the lunch in the first place, and I think Seb, as I, as I said, I think they were both kind of expecting the other to give way, but I don't think Seb really knew he was there until it was too late. Yeah, but then you say that that could be deemed as Seb's fault because he should have been looking. His, yeah. his, his team should have been on the radio to him saying, oh, like Mick might make a chance at the turn it happened, watch out type thing. Um, so you could you could look at it all, all in different ways and yeah. come up with who's wrong, who's right. Um, 
but I'd say it's probably gutting for both of them. Especially with the championship, with how it is, because that really benefited Albon and Stroll, um, which was which was as well um, a mental race. But we'll get to them in a minute. But the other incident with Gasly and Lando, who do you think is at fault for that one? It's a slam. Gasly. Yeah, it's slam on Gasly for me. <laughs> I instantly, I just saw it and I was just like, "What? What are you doing?" Like. Obviously, there was a few cars which overtook him, so he should have expected another car to should overtake stay, him as well. as far right as possible, yeah. It's that whole looking in your mirrors again, like we just said. Yeah. He should have looked, or his team should have came on the radio and said, Norris is coming up right behind you, watch out type thing. It was um, similar to the Latifi Stroll one, actually. Not yeah. exactly the same, but a little bit. Like, I, I think... The fact I wasn't that, going as fast. Yeah, the fact that Gasly said whoops on the team radio after kind of shows that he knew it was his fault. Whoops. I'll give you whoops in a minute. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that was disappointing for Gasly. Um, it wasn't disappointing for Albon and Williams. I didn't see it coming at all. <laughs> it's the red hair. Mm. Red it is hair. the red hair. I feel kind of proud to have a bit of red in my hair. Like... So put in the Williams, you know. We've got red on the bottom of this screen, so it's fine. <laughs> it, I think it just matters where you are for a team like Williams. Um, but it obviously it is just Albon. So it's more like... Alex is just there. It's just yeah. him. He's, he's making the overtakes. He's being there when it matters. And you can say he gets lucky and stuff, like we have done previously. Obviously, Lewis's podium, George's podium, Lando's podium this year. You could say he got lucky, but he put in the work, so it is deserved. Yeah, definitely. He had good pace throughout the race. Um, I do think at the moment these cars, they are... It's quite obvious to know kind of who's where in the performance, but I think a lot of it is confidence-based with these new cars which is why we are seeing some teammates doing a lot better than others um but it's just it's crazy i didn't expect it at all so yeah that's three points for him now three points for williams um with aston martin obviously granted Stroll did get uh, a point but they're fighting them at the moment so latifi needs to put his finger out really (laughs) he had an okay race i think um yes i didn't really see much i didn't see much of him either um, didn't crash. I suppose that's a good thing. We said this last time. He as needs well. to get to the end, yeah, and he got to the end. So credit where it's due. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's it for Williams. Haas. So obviously, big disappointment, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. Mick's letting the team down, in my opinion, at the moment. I'm running out of excuses. I think. I've oh, run it's, out. <laughs> it's so tough because obviously after Sunday, you like he. I can't hate Mick. Hmm. I really can't. And I, the way he is, he's such a. I feel like he's such a nice guy, but the mistakes are just too much. And it's obviously costing the team money. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you you can't keep defending him. He's it's... not a rookie anymore, as well. It's his second season now. Yeah. I mean, he's still kind of as a rookie, but I mean, yeah, it just, for me, it, he's making mistakes that he shouldn't. He's He could have scored a good couple of points this season. He's on none. And he's costing the team money. He's just, he's got to have a good result. But obviously, we've got Spain next, next up and then Monaco. So, they're two, Monaco especially, are very tricky tracks and they can't overtake on either, really. So, he's got to put in a good couple of races, I'd say. Yeah, I think... Spain, he's got to properly push himself. Even if it's one point, yeah. like get that one point, and then he, Monaco is just a track where you know you're not going to have many overtakes. Yeah. Also worth noting, like I think with how this season's gone as well, you never know what's going to happen. And Mick is running a very slow, like very low risk, obviously at the minute, but. He could be bottom in the standings if Williams have a good result. I mean, Latifi got points last season. He's not inadequate. 
I don't know if that's yeah. the right word. Um, but, you know, he's not incompetent, actually. <laughs> Probably the right word. Um, so it could happen, and then that could dull his confidence even more. So I think, yeah, he just needs to focus on finishing and not making mistakes. So, yeah, and who benefited, benefited from that was um, Scholl, Aston Martin. They were a bit up and down this weekend, I'd say. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand their car. Um, I'd say it's probably the most confusing one. Um, it doesn't seem like they've got a decent package at all. It just seems like they're driving the car around the track for an hour and a half on a Sunday, trying to move up positions, hoping there might be a safety car, benefit from it, um, score points, you know. Um, I have a feeling they've got a lot of problems going on at base. Yeah. Which is affecting the whole team. Um, I saw an article saying that they're in financial debt. Big financial debt. Yeah. And they want to sell to Audi. Really? Yeah. I don't know how true this is. I've only seen... Well, I saw one article about the, the debt, but... Um, I've seen a few articles about them wanting to sell to Audi and that there's talks going on. Um, so I don't know if it's just like a core problem and it's going out to the drivers. Okay, interesting. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. The, the car, they did, they, they did okay in quality, they did okay in the race. Obviously both decided to start from the pit lane and Stroll granted credit where it's due he did score some points but that was because of faults of others and i don't you know obviously yeah he got it to the end but without those faults i don't think he would have been where he was so it was a, a weekend of like kind of picking up the pieces for them which is what they need so they still scored points which i guess is more than than can be said for others quite a few others actually but um <laughs> McLaren. <sighs> They're confusing me. Um, I'm always confused as a McLaren fan. Yeah. I just... I don't know. I really do not know. Um, it seems like the track um, messed a few of the cars up where he was good one day and then they was bad the next. Mm. Um... I just don't know what happened. Obviously, Lando got into the top 10 in qualifying, mm -hmm. which is good. They've got pace. That's one good thing. That's positive. Yeah. Um, why couldn't Daniel get into it? It was close. It was, it was like milliseconds, wasn't it? Which which I think does go to show that like actually maybe a lot of the cars aren't actually that bad because the drivers are still very close to each other in quality. It is just, the margins are so fine, which is what the confidence will do. A, li a little bit more confident going into a corner will gain you enough time to normally move you out of the ne into the next session. So it's hard, but Daniel just seems like he's not going to ever regain that confidence from Red Bull. Um, I feel like the younger drivers are getting this car a lot more better. Apart from Alonso, um, they just seem to click with it, and I think that's the thing. Um, obviously, Daniel's first year at McLaren was last year, so you kind of gave him like the benefit of the doubt for the first half of the season. Mm. Um, new car, whatever. It, people think it, it's easy going into a new team, new car. It's really not. You can tell that by the way Daniel was, um, and then. He performed better in the second half, um, but then obviously a completely new car this year. It, I, I don't think he's got the confidence. I think oh. until he has a good weekend and he gets a good amount of points, he we won't see that confidence back. And for him to see Lando get on the podium this year already, he's like, well, really, like, yeah. I will say he did make a very good move into turn one. That was like a really late breaking manoeuvre. And I think maybe he is slowly getting it back. But I don't know. I just I don't feel excited watching him race anymore like that much. So 
it does kind of suck. A team that is exciting, every week they've actually had some really exciting action is Alpine. Um, obviously, Ocon. I think Ocon had a very good weekend, considering he had to start last. Um, well, a very good race, yeah. considering he had to start last. Yeah, that crash was absolutely horrific. Um, yeah. Happened to him. Um, he done well. He done exceptional. It, it, it was looking like he was going to score points anyway. You could tell um, as he was moving up the order, and yeah, he did benefit from a few people. Um, but again, like I said earlier, it it's a part of luck. You've got to be there. Yeah. Um, and it's it, it's nice to see him in with the car um scoring points being there for when obviously when alonso doesn't score points um i feel like they need to unlock a little bit more of the car yeah definitely i think um you know i think both drivers have actually i don't think alonso had a very good weekend um he caused <laughs> some excitement but he did cause kind of kind of messed up gasly a bit there um kind of use Lewis as a steering wheel at some points. Um but you know, he'll learn from it I guess. <laughs> um and just try and do better next week at uh, next race, it's home race. But yeah, it wasn't great from him I don't think. But Ocon did impress me. Yeah, I think he's changing a lot of people people's minds. It's very much um is Ocon gonna be behind Alonso, um we, obviously we've seen the pair race each other this year and it's absolutely quality racing between the pair yeah. um, it matters when you're going against other people not just your teammate um, sorry so, <laughs> um, I'd, I'd definitely say he's the stronger one at the moment yeah no definitely definitely I agree I think um, obviously Bottas did very well in the alpha um i almost got my quality prediction spot on by the way <laughs> literally uh, it was signs and um max that i got the wrong way around but everything else was spot on so i'll take half a point for that you were off by miles so you need to work on that oh yeah time. i don't know what happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was um it was a very good week for weekend for bottas obviously scoring points um I wanted it to be a bit more exciting with the Mercedes. I, th I kind of hoped, but he did make that little mistake. Um, fair enough. He's in Alfa Romeo. Um, Joe, kind of, they had to retire him, didn't they, quite early on. So, Isn't it like the third lap, second lap, third lap? Yeah. So, I mean, we can't really judge him, I guess, really. Um, sucks, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. He, um, he was absolutely gutted. Yeah. I think I think he could have had a good race. I think he could. I think he could have. Um, it was one of the again. It was one of those races where you know anything could happen, and clearly the Alpha is a good car. But I tell you what was exciting though was Mercedes were dueling, which was good to see. Um, yeah. But I... Just to agree, first of all, um, their weekend was a bit mixed. I've got to say, um, George looked like he was looking like he was going to in contention for pole yeah he had an amazing friday what they done to his car i don't know why they just didn't keep it but um no um it, then he had a disappointing qualifying but then lewis was in the top 10 so it's like it's uh, yeah and then obviously george went on different tires to lewis and yeah we all saw how that played out. But <laughs> oh, you can't help but feel bad for Lewis because it just keeps happening to him. A safety car comes and just messes up his race. I don't feel sorry for him because he's had <laughs> so, he had so many seasons with Bottas as his number two where Bottas wasn't allowed to race him unless he asked permission. Lewis had to like you, you know, Bottas had to move out of the way, he had to give Lewis a toe, he had to do everything, and Bottas had no luck. So, 
swings and roundabouts, <laughs> mate. Um, yeah, but <laughs> no, I do feel bad. I do feel bad. They're not saying, oh, like Lewis let George through, blah blah blah. They let them race. Yeah. And it takes me back to 2016. And yeah. Do you think? Do that. you think they'll have? Do you think they'll collide? Do you, Do you think they'll come together? Oh, no, 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 okay. no. I think George respects Lewis too much. Um, he'd put the team's needs first. Um. Depends. Depends when, where, is it raining? Is it dry? A simple mistake like Imola, Imola last year for George against Lewis or the other way round. You you never know. But me personally, I don't see them coming together. No. Um, they know that at the moment this is a team's game until they sort out the car. Um, and. They're going to try and get as much points as possible. Um, I, I, I expect more for, from them this weekend. Yeah, yeah. It was nice to see them battle, though. Um, obviously, Lewis, yeah, it did kind of suck. Different tyres and everything, but he still stayed with him and battled. So I think it was a strong weekend from Lewis. Um, just the, the final result didn't show it. Um, he should have been P5, in my opinion. You know, but that's just how it went. George still finished in the top five each race, which is just amazing. And he's fourth in the standings. So it's good to see. Lewis is, I'm looking down to see, he's sixth. So, you know, he's not a million miles away. Still a long way to go. We did also miss Alpha Tauri for our kind of skip past them, but I don't think there's anything good to say, really. They were just average this weekend. <laughs> is, that, is that too harsh? I don't, I don't really remember what they did. I've been well, funny. They got a twelfth and a DNF. Oh. They got literally no screen time. Apart oh from yeah, crash. we spoke about <laughs> we spoke about Gasly and yeah. Norris. Sorry, <laughs> my mind completely went. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Average day at, uh, the, at the office. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what's going on with them. That's probably in the you got Aston Martin the most confusing car ever, and then probably the Alpha Tauri. Um, I'd say. I don't know. I can't make excuses. Um, we all know what happened to Gasly. Um, Yuki, he's he looks like he's there to pick up the pieces, and then he's improving. I just don't think that car was very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but was he going for the overtakes? <laughs> he had a bit of a moan at his um, engineer over the weekend. Got a lot of hate for that. Red Bull. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Amazing for Max. Well, I don't know. He had a lot of reliability issues before the race. Yeah, yeah, he did. And Perez had some jury. So. Yeah, I think you can't count that out. Um, we obviously we said about like the whole. Well, Max is like DNF to one race. He's then one. He's DNF then one. Yeah. Is he going to DNF again? Um, obviously he didn't, but their reliability, it's just yeah. there, you can't ignore it. Um... I think it I think it shows because Perez had pace all weekend, he was right with signs, you know, before they got a bit dropped by the front two, but then Perez to be on softs after a safety car and not be able to pass signs showed that he did have a, a problem with his car. Um, Red Bull said that it, it cost him p2 and i do see that with the tire difference it could have happened with the speed of that red bull um you know i'm not saying it was definite but he could have been there it could have been another one too so yeah we're gonna mark him down for that haven't we yeah i think part of me thinks obviously when that happened with perez him losing power which i thought was quite funny the fact he was like i'm losing power and he was like his engineer was like no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. He was like, no, I'm losing power. Um, I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Um, part of me thinks, have they just made a really bad mistake making Perez finish that race? Have they damaged parts? Why wouldn't you retire? See if you there's a thing. Um, do some tests. See if what the problem was could be fixed. Yeah. They just made that problem worse. Um, it's tough. Obviously, Max had a brilliant day, shall, shall I say. Yeah. Um, 
he, he needed that win. Um, I just don't know if they're going to be able to keep it up. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but an article's came out saying that Red Bull have spent 75% of their um, budget on upgrades. Really? Wow. Okay. Um, I hope it pays off. Otherwise, they'll be screwed, won't they? Ferrari did it as well. And, really? Um, yeah, Ferrari have said, I don't know how they're going to continue. Like, if Obviously, the, I have a feeling the battle will maybe go to the end, yeah. um, depending on the cars um, and so on. But if Red Bull spend all their money for upgrades, will Max be fighting for the championship in Abu Dhabi? Or will the championship be decided in, I don't know, Mexico, Brazil? Mm, yeah. A few races before the end type thing. Because um, we all saw what Ferrari done last year. Um, the last, I don't know, what, six races was it? Five races? Yeah. They um, updated their power unit. They, they was gone. Like, McLaren couldn't see them at mm. all. Um, so it's... I'd say that's definitely a thing to watch out for. Hmm. I can see Max getting very annoyed if it keeps happening. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know what's going to stop Leclerc. Granted, Max got him, fair enough, and it was a very good, you know, it was exciting for, for what it was, but Leclerc just seems confident every week. And, you know, I just... I don't see Leclerc finishing behind signs. I, I, I don't know if that's harsh to say at this stage. But I don't see that yet. I'm not sure. I hope he changes my mind. I hope Sainz puts in a few great performances. But as it stands, no. I think because Charles is so confident is because his car hasn't got any reliability issues. Hmm. Ferrari have been waiting for this for a good few years. They know what Charles can do. Charles has got this confidence inside him, which is like, I want to win. Yeah. He's, he gets disappointed with if he does a bad pole lap. It's like, well, hold on a minute, mate, you're on pole. Yeah, he like, puts so much pressure on himself, doesn't he? Yeah, and I think that's a like maybe a personal thing, yeah. family thing. He wants to do his family proud, um, which I get. He's unstoppable. I do think so. I think it, I don't want to say like unstoppable because obviously he has been beaten this year, um, but I just think he's driving with such confidence and such aggression and desire that I, I really don't see yeah I just don't really see him being out for many weekends I'm calling it now that he's going to win a title this year oh stuff I think I might cry if he wins the title I think is it too early to call it is it too early no oh, F1 okay. posted about like the um, contenders for the championship already. All right, okay. I might take it, it back. It's just Max and Charles. Yeah, I might take it back, but I think Charles will win it. <laughs> Watching a few races, you'll be saying um, Alex will be going for the championship. Yeah, <laughs> Latifi, what are you on about, lad? <laughs> um, no, I think Red Bull have just gave me this doubt because of the first few races, um, and it just continues to happen. Um, at the moment, I'd say this championship is going in favour of Charles. Things can change. Um, we've got a lot more races to go. Definitely. It's going to be a very exciting end to the season. Well, end to the season. Rest of the season. Um, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Messing up all the time here. Um, but yeah, that, that, wraps up, I, that wraps up this episode of um, All Things Single Seater for the Miami GP. Obviously, it was, yeah, it was mixed, but I'm happy overall. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next time for the Spain preview um, and we will get more predictions on the way. Hopefully I can nearly get it right again. Jordan, you're going to have to up your game. It's not acceptable. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks all for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.